Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 136 of Daryl20's Let's Play series. Hey look, my cow hand is done. What's up, cow hand? Do we have a job having person over here? There's somebody standing here. Manage workers. Oh look! Rocky Christmas! <laughs> Who has, uh, you know, some decent adaptability, but his athletics is kinda meh, and his stamina is super meh. But whatever. That's cool. Welcome, cow hand. I guess he got assigned the job. Uh, today's episode, I want to check in on the village real quick. I'm assuming research is good. Um, and whatnot, right? Uh, let's see. Research, 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 research. Yes. So civilian research uh, has expanded to a hamlet, which increases our max citizen size, which is cool. Currently, I have no research going on, but I should probably kick some off. Let's check in over here on our... Colony information. We are currently at 60 out of 60. We need more houses if we want more citizens. That shouldn't be too hard of a thing to get going. Um, I already kind of started working on newer housing, as you can see here. So we should probably build options. I will make Kai build this one to a level 3. And we'll make Yisrael build this one to a level 3. And that'll get us a few more citizen slots. Um, yeah, yeah, guys, it is, uh, it is a, it's, I'm pretty pleased with our village right now. I'm feeling like it's in pretty good shape. I don't know, I don't know what all else there is to do much of. I think we've covered most content here. Uh, I'm gonna have to, like, look through JEI and see what other buildings there are available. Um, just so I can see what's up. Let's do some combat research real quick. Um, these guys are all pretty good. Knight's armor increases for half a stack of iron. That sounds like a good time. Um, guard armor increases. I'm not sure what the difference between a guard and a knight is, to be fair, right? Guards flee under 20% HP. Well, I mean, that seems like a good time. Just needs an emerald. How about emerald, stack of leather, stack of iron? That sound cool? Emerald... Stack of leather. Look at all that leather we've got now, huh? How cool is that? Half a stack of iron. Beautiful. Into the combat tech tree we go. So repost. And regeneration. And... Oh, it's locked out because I did regeneration. Oh, my bad. Well, that's okay. I think, I think regen sounds like a better time anyway. Getting them to run away when they're under 20% health. That seems smart. Doesn't that seem smart? I feel like it seems smart. Squire training, huh? For four shields? That sounds fun. I'm down with that. For four shields. Does that get us a new type of... of, of combat person? Or what's the deal? Squire. Night shield blocking chance increases. Okay, that's fair. Whatever. It's all good. We're making it happen. I mean, there's no reason not to do research, right? Just you kick it off and you let it go. So you don't want it to be, like, idle. You don't want people not researching. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave the village to hang out by itself today for a little bit. I think it's really quite self-sufficient. Last few episodes, obviously, we've been working on Woot. I think we're in pretty good shape there. If it turns out that we need to go back to Woot to, like... Maybe we need a lot of some resource, and we don't, you know, easily have it at the moment. We could, we could get into that. Uh, what I want to start working on today is an old favorite mod mixed with a new one that I've never played with. How's that sound? Um, the old favorite mod is Batania. It's been a long time since we've done any Batania stuff, but I mean, this is one of those mods that's been around forever. It's super cool. It's a really amazing and awesome mod with a ton of nuance, a ton of things in it. And the new mod that's mixed with it is Mythic Botany, which is some kind of add-on mod to it. Because it looks like it it obviously has a lot of a lot of different, you know, items and blocks and whatnot that are obviously inspired by Batania, because it looks like an expansion. So basically there's there's mana infusers that allow you to get alf steel ingots that you know you can use to upgrade your alf blade from your terra blade. Looks like a pretty awesome weapon, by the way. Uh, some other cool things. So I want to check out what Mythic Botany brings to the table. 
uh, if we can. So I think our goal, it looks to me like Mythic Botany is like an end game Batania style mod because most of the stuff that you have to get in here is all like super upgrades, right? This is what it looks like to me, right? Almost everything is post Alfheim or so it seems. Maybe there's a few that aren't, right? Like whatever the Exoblaze is. Um, so it looks like there's a few, ooh, Wither Aconite, that sounds cool. Aquapanthus and Hellbor. Sweet. So there's some there's some flowers uh, to check out. There's uh, a couple blocks that I don't know what they do. A lot of the stuff is Alpine oriented. So let me flip through uh, the Batania book here because it's been a while since we've even touched Batania in this series. We started just a little bit just to get our early game. We got the Sash, right? And uh, we also used it to get the Pyroclast pen. Um, but I would like to maybe automate some aspects of Batania. And you know what might be fun? if we were to automate the runic doohickey the runic altar that might be fun that might be fun so we're gonna see about potentially doing that as well so let me flip through the lexica batania and i'm gonna figure out what some of these book uh, new flowers are right the ones that are in mythic botany and we'll be right back oh look how handy this is they they put the at least three of them together so the Exoblaze <coughs> uses mana to fill uh, the fuel of nearby brewing stands. Okay, so it's like the Exo Flame, but it's the ex so it's for brewing stands. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Um, fill nearby cauldrons and petal apothecaries with water. That's neat. The Aquapanthus, so that automatically fills water. Uh, the Hellboy or Hellbor piglins and hoglins that are near the hellbore will not turn into zombies as long as the flower has enough mana that's interesting all right neat so that was exoblaze aquapanthus and hellbore now the other one is the wither aconite and ooh, rain delitia i like the sound of this i like this i just like the name does it mean there's no more rain uh produces mana when it's raining and even more mana when it's thundering that's uh, the opposite Placing on vivid grass or enchanted soil makes it generate much more. Boo. It sounded like it would delete the rain. Rain del deltia. Rain delita. Well, yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. It was going to delete the rain. Uh, wither Aconite. The Wither Aconite uses up nether stars dropped on it to create mana from them. I wonder how much mana you get per nether star. Because that sounds like a lot. It gobbles nether stars. I mean, we got to try it, right? Rune of Pride. That's a higher tier rune, isn't it? believe it is yeah it's a tier two rune fire and summer it's a tier three rune tier three rune okay yeah so i mean not terrible though not terrible i'm really curious though like how much mana does it generate i think our goals should be this uh here's what i'm thinking in my brain we will um let's 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 open the portal elfheim then we'll check out probably i want to see uh the the wither aconite um maybe a couple other generating Maybe I should use the Wither Aconite to generate the mana to open the portal to Elfheim. Because it's a new mana generation flower, which is, you know, cool. And I'm just curious how good it is. I'm just worried about the mana spreaders being really slow um, with the Wither Aconite. Because if it generates, like, a stupid amount of mana... Um, and we can, we can do some tricky things to find out how much mana they generate. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Does it tell you how much mana it generates? Um... It really doesn't say in any way, shape, or form, right? And then there's a mana collector, by the way. At some point in time, your flowers will create mana that fast, that spreaders are not enough to handle it. The This comes in. It allows the mana of flowers to be inserted into the spark network directly. You still need to attach a recessive spark to it, though. Well, that's interesting. So, like, it's... Oh. So, it's like a, it's like, it's like a spreader, but for the spark now. Okay, that's interesting. So, you can bind flowers to the mana collector... And that's also an Elfheim required because it needs Dreamwood. Uh, and the Gaia spiriting it, so we'll have to do a Gaia fight. And the Rune of Vanaheim, which is a Mythic Botany rune. Uh, which needs another writing. Let's look at that. Okay, cool. So these are some of the runes that you need. Um, that's cool. Runes of the Nine Worlds. Neat. Oh, that's cool. I like that idea. Uh, so, yeah, I think our plan should be let's, let's open the portal to Elfheim before we do the Nether Star Flower. Um, so obviously we have, you know, these, these simple little adorable, adorable buddies making a not terribly terrible amount of mana for us, but we're going to either want to automate this or do more with it. 
So what would be a cool flower to automate for us? What would be a fun one? Um, let's see, functional flora, generating flora. Yeah, let me flip through the generating flora that we have available to us right now, and I'll see which one might be fun to automate in an interesting way. So I would say the only flowers that are kind of would be fun and interesting to automate at this point would be the Entropinium and the Gormaleus, um, until we get a few more flowers unlocked. Um, so hydrangeas just, you know, you put water around them and they're passive gen. So that's not fun to automate. Munchdew eats leaves. Um, also not super fun to generate. Uh, this one generates mana from slime chunks. When slimes would spawn, it destroys them and prevents their spawn and generates mana. I've never used it, but also slime chunks are annoying. Um, and I mean, like, I just don't feel like it. No. Uh, Rosa Arcana eats experience. I mean, yes, but also bleh. Uh, and then Thermal Lily is um, lava-based. It'll generate a decent amount of mana from lava, but it has a five-minute cooldown before it can absorb more, which is a little bit of a bummer. Um, so, like, it's it's like a nice, I need mana right now, a bunch of it. It's not a nice way of, of generating, um, you know, long-term mana. It's, like, slow over a, a period of time where it's fast for right now. So if you're like, dude, I need mana real quick, Thermal Lily, good. If you're like, I want, you know, long-term generation with lots of mana, no. So I'm thinking Gormaleus or Entropinium would probably be the fun one. So Entropinium is the one where it's TNT. So it'll if you blow up TNT near it, it'll consume the blast, preventing any block damage. Um, however, to absorb uh, the explosion, the flower must not have any mana stored in it. Otherwise, explosions as usual. So you want to make sure that there's no mana in the flower. So you don't want to blow up the TNT until, you know, the flower is done producing. And then the Gormaleus, you feed it food, um, and it'll generate mana based on how good the food is. Um, now, the downside is that you don't want to overfeed it. So, like, it eats, and while it's eating, if you give it more food, it's going to eat the food but not generate the mana. So, like, it'll eat as much food as you give it, but it'll only generate mana for the first food you're giving it until it's done eating, and then you can give it another one. So we want to be careful about, like, not overdoing it. Um, so both of those introduce some interesting mechanics around how to automate, right? So let's... Maybe we'll do both. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking we might want the... I'm going to start off with the Gormaleus. Um, only because there's another mod we haven't played with yet called Culinary Construct. This is the one that lets you make sandwiches out of, like, any meat, I think. Um, so that might be fun. Or, I don't think it's actually any food at all, right? Do you need bread for culinary construct? I don't even know. Um, so let's see. We've got some beef. We've got some apples. We've got carrots. We've got potatoes. Um, yeah, I don't actually know all the rules of culinary construct. It might not be a bad idea to, to look into. Uh, but let's cook some potatoes. Let's cook. There you go, buddy. Yes, do the thing. And we'll be ready to, to do all the things. Yes, more raw beef. All right, so we've got steak. We've got, you know, do we have chicken? We do have a lot of chicken. And we have a lot of raw pork chops, too. That would be cool. Yay for setting up that mob thingy, right? That's pretty awesome. That was a good call. There you go. So there's your stack of pork chops. Here's your stack of chickens coming in. Boom. That's what's up. All right, um, let's check out Culinary Construct and the Gormaleus, and let's see what kind of ridiculous foods we can make, and maybe that would be a fun way to generate mana by playing with mods we haven't played with before. Uh, so Gormaleus is going to need Rune of Summer, which is air and earth, and I think it might also be fun to automate runes. Um, I'm trying to think about how I want to do that. We could maybe do it with Integrated Dynamics. Could be fun. Um... Runes have traditionally been one of the harder things to automate, though, because you don't want to put m multiple things in the in the in the in the crafter, right? So there's like a lot of nuance to the runic altar and making it work properly. So 
when you move your items, basically what you want to do is you want to move all the items that you need to craft with into the runic altar at once and make sure no other items go into it until it's completely done crafting. So that's a little bit of a trick that we're going to have to figure out. So I think what I'd like to do is start with automating the mana production so that we can get mana going. And while the mana is being produced, we can then work on automating the runic altar. Yes, I like that plan. Okay, so we've got this stuff cooking here. We're making ourselves a rune of summer, which is going to go towards the Gormelaeus. And once that's hooked up, drop the living room. Oh, wrong thing. There you go. I like that you get your rune of earth and air back when you make your rune of summer. That's just the best. Isn't it the best, though? Um, and I really want to check out that... that what was the recipe for the flower for the aqua panthus? I might want the floating one. I don't know that I need the floating one. Uh, two blue, two cyan, and a green. Two blue, two cyan, and a green. Huh. Okay. Blue flower, two blue, two cyan, and a green. And then some seeds. Did I read that wrong? Did I read that wrong? The Aquapanthus. Two blue. A cyan and a light blue. Oh. Oh. Well, there's your problem. A cyan and a light blue. They look the same. It's not my fault. Now it's happy. Sweet. Now if I plant that here, boop. Oh, nice. I love it. I love it. I assume it just grabs mana from the nearby mana pool and then just fills up. I like that. That is awesome. All right. Gormaleus needs two light gray, two yellow, and a red. So light gray. That's like our last light gray flower, though. So we should probably bone meal and shears that thing, which I also might want to automate. Just not that I've ever run into a situation where you need that many of these things, but still, but still automating this might be fun. It's one of those just like for the challenge kind of deals, right? Like a neat way to automate something. Okay. So you're going to want two light gray, two yellow, a red, a fire, and a summer. So there's fire, there's summer, and a red mystical petal. Hooray, Gormaleus. And seeds. Whoop. I like that. like that. That's pretty cool. All right. And then... Uh, you, buddy, can just chill right there, and you'll just take any food, right? So here's the deal, right? I'm going to demonstrate with carrots, for example. Carrots, let's see, apples, cooked pork chops are way better, right? So, like, let's compare steak with carrots, raw carrots. Yeah. So if I throw a raw carrot in there, see, it eats, it finishes eating, and then it generates mana. And I think the deal is that if you feed it the same food over and over again, it kind of gets bored of it. See how much slower it's eating? It's like, this is boring food. And it's barely producing mana anymore, see? But if you give it a different piece... See how much longer it takes to eat? and how much more mana it generates from the steak. So basically the better the food, the more mana and the longer it takes to eat. Now here's the other problem with this thing. Wow, that produced a lot of mana, nice. The other problem with this thing is that if you feed it the same food while it's still eating, or even different food, it eats it, but it's not gonna produce any more mana. 
So, like, all that food I just gave it is wasted. I just voided all that food. It was a waste. Right? So, let's see. I think if you alternate two, you're good. As long as you don't see feed the same one over and over again. So, you need to alternate at least two. So, we have to take turns between the steak and the carrots. Now let's see what Culinary Construct can do for us to make some cool stuff, right? Um, so Culinary Construct, I think you just give it bread and then you give it food and it'll give you different kinds of, of food output. That's cool. And the more varied kinds of food you put in there and the better food that you put in there, the better the output. Does that sound about right? Now I'm putting three proteins in there, so those are all good. And we did, uh, you know, carrots and apples. I'm, I might want to do the potatoes rather than that. I hope you store your contents. Because I'm not quite sure, but we're going to try this, right? So let's do this one. And then I'm going to replace the weakest food, which would be carrots are the weakest food here, with potatoes, which are a little bit better. Okay. And you can see what ingredients are there by holding shift. Now the downside is that you're not showing me the ham hocks and the hearts. Why are you not showing me how much food that is? Why are you not showing me how good this food is? What if I drop you on here? Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. Interesting. Like it's it's not like you need food, right? Or a name. I don't think so. Why you no want oh, no, nope, not what I wanted to do. What I'm gonna do is make sure I'm hungry for a sec. Will you not feed me if you're not? I'm gonna actually put you in here, meat feeder. And I'll be back in a second once I race down some ham hocks into hunger mode. That did not take long, actually. Now, can I eat this? Yes. Wow, that gave me a lot of saturation, which is nice. Now, with this one, that was baked potato. This one is therefore not the baked potato one. Both pretty darn good. But why you no culinary uh, gourmalais? Are they too good? So that's a bit of a bummer. I was really hoping for some good food here. But what if I made it not as good? Just 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 to be clear. Is it because the food's too good or is it just not recognizing this food at all? All right, so we're going to try something a little ridiculous. Just to see how absurd it is. Now, I'm, I'm thinking what might be the case is that because there's no hearts listed on the tooltip, for some reason, that food works differently than normal food. Um, but I did find from the rats mod, there's a couple <clears throat> interesting pieces of food. There is the confit baldi, which is 50 ha uh, ham hocks and 1,000 saturation. And then there's potato knishes, which are also that. So... I don't know how ridiculous this will be. <laughs> I'm I'm assuming, knowing Basky, the Gormalais probably has a limit to how much mana it can produce. So I doubt that this will be a thousand times better than a carrot, right? But it's worth a try. I'm just curious at this point. So I want to make these with rats. Just because. Just because. Now, I don't think I have any rats hanging around. It's been a while since we've done anything with rats. Um, what I could do is just borrow my tick accelerating rats real quick. I don't know even what happened to all my rats that were living around here. Like, I had rats all over the place doing things. Like, all the rats that were chill. Didn't I have them, like, living up here doing things? Uh, they all just disappeared at some point. I mean, I don't know what, when, how that happened. But they all just went poof. Uh, there is a couple down here, though, so that's cool. That's cool. One or two are still alive. Definitely at least this one's still here. Hey, buddy. Thanks for not being dead. Appreciate that. 
that's nice. Um, there's another couple. Do what now? Oh, you did that. Okay. I'd really like it if I could, uh, yeah, no. Without actually... Without messing up, like, the colors and all that stuff, it would be cool. Anyway, I'll come back in a minute once I get these other rats off. Well, no, I'll probably just use the four that I've got here. That should be enough. Because I only need two. I need the gem cutter and the chef. So I'll just turn two of these. Uh, one will become a gem cutter and one will become a chef. How's that sound? So we already have a gem cutter. Uh, for the chef rat, <clears throat> we need this. So, um... Let's see, what do we got here? We've actually got the six cakes we need. Uh, and then we just need the chef's hat, which looks cool. Awesome. Awesome. So first thing we're going to need is little black squash balls, which are coal from a gem cutter. So if I just gave Mr. Gem Cutter, the rat is the cook. Yes, and he makes good things. Oh, where's his chef hat? I wanted to see the chef hat. Boo. But you, Gem Cutter, do thing. There you go. Oh, wow, it's one per? Oof. Oof, oof. We'll come back, uh, let's see. And then to make black worms, little black worms, we need potato pancakes? Yeah. We're gonna want a few more of these, you see. Uh, oops, wrong factory. Boop, boop, boop. And then we're also gonna want the vegetables, assorted vegetables here. I can get a stack of those. And while while he's making that, I would like you, you give this the rat the assorted vegetables, and he will make the confit bialdi, which is like ridiculous food, as you can see. Anyone can cook. That's right. Cool. And then also these guys become this. And then that guy gets gem cuttered into centipedes, which are then turned into potato conditions. Don't ask me how that works, okay? <laughs> Don't ask me how. So you turn coal into squash balls, add it to potato pancakes, and you get worms. Then the gem cutter turns the worm into a centipede, and then the chef cooks the centipede into potato. Don't ask. I have no idea. I'm going to real quick here do the little black worm. I'm going to turn him into the centipedes that we need just because I would like to start them cooking. Quote unquote cooking. <laughs> I'm being very generous with the word cooking right there. Um, oh, good. Potato knishes. The rats are adorable, though. You have to give them that. They're so good at what they do. All right. And then you can get back to making more confit bialdi. All right. Let's, let's see what kind of bananas this does, right? Um, 50 and 1,000. Okay, let's do it. How long is it going to take to eat? Because one of those determines how long it takes to eat. That wasn't that bad. Did he, like, fill up the flour? He might have filled up the flour all the way. It's a lot of mana. That is not bad, folks. That is not bad. There's a limit. There's a limit. Like, the flour has an internal buffer limit. There's a number, right... Um, like if we were to throw a steak at it, for example. See, the steak is half of a flower. And, you know, presumably these guys just, just fill up the flower 100%, no problem. Yeah, basically that. So, you know, obviously there's an upper limit here. It was just more for fun, and to show you guys the ridiculous food you can make from rats. But, that's the plan. Alright, that's not too bad. What I'm gonna say is because, um... I'm, I'm gonna say no gem cutting rat. Is what I'm gonna say. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna say that. Um, because the confit bialdi is just this. There's no gem cutting and all that process. So, and, and the, it doesn't make a difference. So we might as well just use something like steak. 
and the confit the Aldi thing, right? I think that's kind of the way. I think that's the way. I think that's the way. We alternate steak and confit. Cool. I think that works. All right, so you, Mr. Tick Accelerator Rat, can go back in the Tick Accelerating Rat Bag, and you, buddy, can just chill there and make food for me. Thanks, buddy. You're the best. All right, uh, now to automate this dude. So we want to drop him when he's out of mana. Um, so can you read a comparator? I'm just curious. See how much less mana it produced that time? Like a lot less, right? And also, no, Comparator doesn't read how much mana is in a Gormalaeus at the moment. Because what I'd like him to do... Mm, I need to read and determine when he's eating so I know when to drop again. Now, we could do it on a timer, because if we alternate correctly... If we alternate correctly... Um, the amount of time it takes to eat will be static. So we could do it on a timer. That's one approach. And I think while we're here, we should do a quick potency lens, right? I think that seems like a good time. Now we're gonna need a fire lens for that potency. So that is wart, gunpowder, brick. Nether wart, nether brick, gunpowder, Mana and mana. And a quick living rock. So yeah, we could either do it with a timer. That's the simpler approach, but it's also one that's more prone to failure, right? The problem with the timer is that it can fail. If our timer gets off somehow, things can go wrong, right? It's not perfect. It should work. It should work. But it could fail. It could fail. So, by the way, putting a, a potency lens on this dude means that he transfers his mana faster. Now, I forget the last thing you eat. Probably the Confit Bialdi. So, my bad. I should really figure out, you know. But he should transfer his mana faster now. So, the potency lens makes it so that the mana spreader... Um, cool. The mana spreader sends the mana in bigger bursts. There's also, if you want it to be faster, there's velocity. That one makes the mana burst travel from the spreader to the pool faster. Because remember, the spreader won't fire another burst until the one it's already fired hits the pool. So, like, it shoots the burst. When it hits the pool, it's, you know, it's allowed to fire another burst. So, <laughs> all right, let me think this through for a minute. I'll be right back. All right. For some reason, Yisrael just now started working on Citizen 3, so I appreciate that, buddy. It's been, like, an entire episode since I asked you to do that. But whatever, Yis, you're good, buddy. Um, what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here. I'm going to think about this between this episode and next, and so we'll come back next time. Basically, there's, there's two ways we can do this. We can either do it with a timer, like I said, and, like, you know, drop one, wait, let's say, 30 seconds, drop the other, wait 30 seconds, drop the next, the first one again, right, and alternate back and forth. Those are options. The other option would be going integrated dynamics, which is sort of cheating, right? Because, like, Batania is not meant to expose that data. So, but integrated dynamics can read anything. Um, so the question is, is it cheating? Yes. But is it also, you know, cross-mod interaction, which is fun? Yes. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm not sure what I want to do. But for now, it's wrapping up point. So Darwin 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. We'll automate the Gormalaeus, and then probably look at automating the TNT. Um, and then we're going to want to amp up our spreaders. We're going to want to... There's a lot of things we're going to want to amp up. And get the uh, portal to Elfheim open so we can start looking at Mythic Botany. All right, guys. Take it easy.